I played it for my publisher and he was like, this song is brilliant but it will never get recorded. So why not? You know, I was devastated. Welcome everybody. We've got Clay Mills with me here in the studio. We've got another episode <laughs> where I'm going to surprise him with a topic. So we haven't discussed this, but Clay, I want to talk about fatal flaws in songs. Like what oh. are fatal flaws that can just make a song have no chance? And, and I'll start with the story about one of mine and uh, give you a minute to think. But years ago, I wrote a song called The Shadow of a Man. And I played it for my publisher. And he was like, this song is brilliant, but it will never get recorded. So why not? You know, I was devastated. And, and he said, because no artist wants to say this. And so my song was about a boy sees his dad going into the house across the street and through the semi sheer curtains, he sees his dad embrace the woman that lives across the street. So he knows that his father's cheating on his mom. And from then on, his father became the shadow of a man to him. And so, he, you know, he's my publisher said, well, just imagine a big artist gets up in front of his stadium crowd every night and sings about his dad cheating on his mom. You know, who wants to do that? Because people are going to think it's true. If his mom and dad are still alive, people are going to, in their little hometown, come up and go, hey, did that, did you really cheat on her? You know, and it, it's just not something that an artist wants to say. So when you write something that either paints the artist in a really bad light or it paints their family in a really bad light, um, it's probably not going to work. You know, and even if, if you are the artist, if you're out there singing it and it makes you sound like um, an immoral person or, a, you know, a, a person who's cheating, that's not going to be real attractive to most audiences. So that's one is writing something that, that an artist doesn't want to say it makes them look bad or makes their family look bad. Um, can you think of any others, Clay? Yeah. Well, I mean, just to piggyback on that, you know, there's often times that as writers, we need to write a song to get it out of our system. We need to say something. We need to. So if you need to write that song, by all means, write that song. Just what we're saying is, in this instance, don't expect to go out and get a major superstar to sing that song or anyone, because even if someone did grow up in a home where their parent was cheating all the time, they're probably not going to want to sing that for the rest of their career, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's a very hard thing. So by all means, don't ever shy away from a subject that you feel you have to write to, to get it out. Um, you know, because that, that can block you if you don't do that, but just know what your what the purpose of writing that is for, yeah. you know, you're, you're writing it to get it out. You're not writing it for the whole world to sing along and, and be kumbaya. That <laughs> right. Yeah. Mine was definitely not a kumbaya song. And it wasn't even something, you know, those, you know, it wasn't even something that anybody in the room felt like they needed to write. We just thought it was a compelling story. And so we wrote it, you know, and, and maybe there right. would be a home for it in TV and movies somewhere where there's a scene that fits that or something, you know, but just as far mm -hmm. as, our intended purpose was to pitch it to artists. And that was a fatal flaw in, in our thinking and trying to, to do that. You know, I don't know that song, Marty, um, because no artist wanted to record it and put it <laughs> out, but I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm guessing another thing that I think is a fatal flaw that maybe that song suffered from is a lot of times when we as writers write a difficult subject we want to write, you know, that painful thing. But a lot of writers leave out that sliver of hope. And, and I've found that songs can be tremendously sad, but somewhere there needs to be that sliver of hope in there, yeah. you know, and it's a subtle thing. It doesn't have to be a huge sliver of hope. It could be something in the bridge that, you know, that alludes to it or, but it's perspective. Nobody just wants to hear a terminally sad song with no chance of life ever getting better. Yeah. So it, the most powerful songs have contrast of, you know, 
this is a horrible thing that I'm going through, but I know tomorrow will be a brand new day. You know, songs need that contrast to make them interesting, to, to give hope to the listener. Um, so, I, you know, I'm sure somebody out there will find a song that offers no hope, <laughs> but they're really few and they're really very few and far between because yeah. um, it's not what it's not what our inner spirit wants to to resonate well, with. One time I was out on the road with Billy Currington writing and he had a hit song called um, Walk a Little Straighter, Daddy. I think it went top 10. And it was about his dad being an alcoholic. And he said, man, I had to quit playing that song in my show because people would get up and go to the bathroom or go get a beer. And then they would come back when I was singing something fun and upbeat. And he said, I finally realized people came to my show to get away from their alcoholic daddy and their problems, not to hear me complain about mine. And so, you know, even though it was a great song and it was true and it had a lot of emotional depth to it, but it's just not, that's not why people come to a concert to hear something that's going to bring them down. You know, you want to, when you come to a concert, you want to be uh, excited. You want to leave feeling better than when you came and all that kind of stuff. And, and so you don't want this song that's just hopeless and, and makes you think of yeah. sad things without, without any of that. So yeah, that sliver of hope can, can be a fatal flaw for sure. Yeah. I mean, people, people do do song, people do songs in concerts that are sad. And we're, we're not saying you, that doesn't happen either, but it's that sliver of hope at the same time, that inspiration, right. Um, and maybe if maybe an artist, if they're going to do a sad song, maybe they have one slot for that in their show. So maybe it makes it onto their album, but it's not going to be something they sing in a show. But once again, without that sliver of hope, Billy learned that he can't sing that song night after night. It just wouldn't work. And I doubt he wants to sing that song because maybe he feels differently about his dad 10 years later, you know? So yeah. it, then to sing, you know, it just, it, it's too hard of a thing to, to pull off. Yeah, but I, I have to note that a minute ago you said doo-doo, which, which that, oh, that okay. could be our word for the day. Word of the day. <laughs> Don't do that again. Um, you know, I think something else that can be a fatal flaw is just poor communication. You know, um, when we write songs, we have the whole story laid out in our head. And, and our ability to get that story onto paper where the whole story is there and you don't have to have known my grandmother for that song to make sense um, can be a fatal flaw. So I think leaving out important details, not communicating clearly about what, you know, what your story is and, and why people should care about it, all those things can be fatal flaws. Yeah, and if you're, you know, not just about details because you don't want to load up a song with so many details that people can't put their own situation into the song. So I, I think a lot of times it's about writing it in a way that everyone can relate to it. So it's not so, what you're saying. It's not so specific to just that one person's grandparent and so, so much so that no one else can relate. Yeah. To or it. even so, in addition to that, that, that you have to, know some backstory to understand the song. You know, like you, most of us have been at writer's nights where somebody gets up and they tell a 15 minute story. This, you know, this song is about this and this and this. And, and if I have to have a 15 minutes speech before the song to understand it, it's not probably going to work because the song needs to work on its own. You know, so if, if I'm going to put that song out or if I'm going to pitch that for an artist, the listener's not going to have advantage of hearing that 15 minute story. So the song has to be able to stand on its own and, and not doing that can be a fatal flaw. And, you know, there's another thing I was going to get your thoughts on, you know, I think to a melody that's, that's boring can really be a fatal flaw. Cause I've heard, I've heard some songs with great lyrics that had a melody that was just not inspiring at all. And and very block like like da 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 you know and just everything in the song is kind of that. What are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, I have a course on the Songtown website right now that deals with contrast. And I think oftentimes what we respond to when we hear a melody and it, the melody is boring is there's not enough contrast in the melody. Every line, every vocal line starts on the downbeat for the entire song. Every vocal line starts on the same note. You know, maybe in the chorus, they start on that note and they go up higher, but they're still starting each line on the same note. I heard a single out the other day where every no every line of the song that the singers sang started on the same note. And of course, the, the single never did anything. Um, and it was on a major label. But I think a lot of times it's these contrast elements, like having the same rhythm pattern in the verse and the chorus. Or if your verse lines, you know, if you look down the right side of the paper and every line of the song is, you know, straight down the page on that right side margin, then it's probably not an interesting melody. You know, follow the great writers um, out there and their verse line will be, you know, a length. Then they hit the pre-chorus and all of a sudden it could be twice as long for the, the lines in the pre-chorus. And then maybe the, the, ver the chorus is in between those. So knowing how to create an interesting melody often is about knowing how to follow these contrast techniques and not having enough contrast in your lyric or your melody is going to be a killer to a song because contrast is what makes your song interesting. Right. And it's what touches, it touches people. You know, if um, just thinking from a lyric standpoint, if you have a song where you have contrast, I'm thinking of a great payoff line. Even if the whole world has forgotten the song remembers when. So you have the contrast of forgotten and remembered, yeah. you know, and it's, it's like when you hear that song and they, they get to the end of the chorus and they sing, even though the whole world has forgotten the song remembers when, and it gives me chill bumps because those, a song can take you back to remember your first yeah. love, you know, that it, it has that power. So not only does contrast create interest and keep people listening, but it creates that emotional impact that really touches people. So I think, you know, that when you talk about a boring melody, 99% of the time, I think it's because the melody doesn't have enough contrast. Yeah, that's true. I've got one more. Um, I, I think writing about things that not enough people care about can be a fatal flaw. Hmm. You know, I've got some nerdy hobbies, like I, I metal detect and I fly a drone. Not enough people do those things for me to go write a bunch of songs about them. You know, I might write one just for myself for fun, but I have to understand that that's a very niche thing and, and not, it's not going to be something with broad appeal. So that's not the song yeah. I'm going to be able to put out and it's going to be a monster hit or that I'm going to be able to pitch to a major artist and they're going to want to sing about because they know that not a big percentage of their fans do that thing, even if they like it, you know. So I think we have to, to yeah. always, you know, when I'm writing, I'm always asking the question, who's going to care about this song? You know, is, is it something that anybody who's ever been in love cares about? Is it something that anybody who's ever lost someone cares about? Or is this song about quilting, you know, and only people who mm -hmm. make their own quilts are going to care about it, you know? So I think if, if we have, the idea that we want to pitch a song for an artist to sing, we have to make sure that it's a, a topic that enough people want to hear and enough people care about. Yeah. I mean, if you're at a crochet convention, then you might be able to get up on stage and sing that exactly. song, right? Crochet, word of the day. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's not a word we use a lot in conversation or in songs. First of all, I would make you know, we crochet. Yeah, I would make sure that there is such a thing as a crochet convention, which there may be. You can write <laughs> in and tell us if if there is, and uh, maybe that song would work for that. All right, let's talk about Sweetwater. Do you like Sweetwater, Clay? I love Sweetwater. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can see how much I love. Sweetwater, uh -huh. because I've got a whole studio full of 
sweet water. And um, let me tell you, their water is very sweet. Ding, hmm. ding. Yes. Cheese of the day. <laughs> you, Cheese you, of the day. You crocheted yourself into a corner <laughs> in there. Um, no, we we love Sweetwater. They're they're a fabulous place to buy instruments, recording gear, pretty much anything you need in the music world. We'd love to have you in Songtown. We level up songwriters. Um, we help you write your best, and then we connect you with industry when you're ready, when your songs are ready, and we're here for you. <laughs>